Podcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz... Shout out to the NFL Network for broadcasting this one. We had the Bucks versus the LA Rams. Oops. Did I say did I say the LA Rams? My bad. That may be next year. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the St. Louis Rams. Both teams were at five. Well, both teams are now six and eight now. But uh I know it wasn't a game that it really mattered. It really didn't matter that much um, in terms of the outcome of this game. Uh, at being a former athlete, being a former professional football player with the Giants and the Dolphins and in the CFL, this is one of those games where guys are playing for their jobs. Guys are playing for their livelihoods for this game. Who's going to be back next year? Who's going to be off on another team? Who's going to be out the league completely? So today, since it's just me here in studio, uh, Derek Hagan, once again, has some recruiting business to do with Arizona State. We all know Derek Hagan, uh, former longtime NFL football player, former Arizona State. I mean, he's uh, Arizona State Sun Devil. He's all over their record books. Now they got him running around doing some recruiting stuff. I don't know. But it's just me here today. But I do have a special guest, uh, another one of my boys, and we'll get to him uh, in a little bit once he gets ready. But... um. First and foremost, make sure you guys go out and you follow AfterBuzz TV on all social media outlets. You follow them on YouTube and you follow me at Cultured Athlete on all the social media platforms. I'm working on getting Snapchat. I just had two people tell me today, you need to get a Snapchat. You need a Snapchat. You need a Snapchat. If, if Instagram video was just, it's, that's already too much for me. But without further ado, oh yeah, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube page as well, YouTube slash The Cultured Athlete, um, and check out BrandonLondonTV.com so you can see my journey as a football player, some behind the scenes footage, and uh, what we athletes are doing off the field. But without further ado, I have on the line or on Skype via Saskatchewan, Regina, Saskatchewan, yeah. all the way up in cold Canada. Shout out to Canada. What's up, Drake? OVO XO, all that good stuff. Luke Mo uh, Luke Mullinder, he's a former pro football player and he's a CFL analyst for Riderville.com and creator of ProPerspective.ca and one of my former teammates. My boy Luke, what's going on, man? Yes, sir. What's going on, man? That was a hell of an intro you did there. Yeah, it was I'm a lot of work. So, I'm working uh, on it, man. I'm working on it. Now that I've realized yeah. that I'm five months out of pro football, I have to really... Uh, indulge myself in the culture as yeah. actor host that sort of thing you know so intros well, was something that i wanted to work on you know i was uh, i was actually if, if we have two seconds i was actually really impressed man there's not a lot of times where a professional athlete gets to choose to walk away from the game of yeah. football yeah. or any sport so you know you you really have to be confident in the next venture but you also have a significant you have to have a significant amount of confidence in yourself so yeah. kudos to you man you're doing your thing out there glad i could be a part appreciate of it appreciate it man appreciate it and and you know what i i do kind of miss the game and it's games like this that really makes me miss the game because with vincent jackson being out for the tampa bay buccaneers James yeah. Winston had no one but Mike Evans to throw to. And I'm sitting here like, how my knees? How's my how's yeah. the concussions? I think I can go out there and play for this guy. What were your well, thoughts of the game? Well, that's that's your that's your brain speaking, and your brain probably <laughs> could, man, but as soon as your body started oh, yeah. warm ups, it would tell you oh, so, yeah. it would tell you another thing real yeah, quick, man. man. Yeah, man. So uh as you know, as a you you played pro football, you played, you know, at the high level, you're a Michigan State guy, shout out, go green. Um yeah. And a, and a D lineman, because I really want to go into the trenches, because I'm really upset with the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line. Kind of yeah. run through your thoughts of the game. Give me some pluses. Give me some minuses. Who's your player of the game? That sort of thing. 
Well, it's funny because at the beginning of, you know, when I shot you a text, I said, hey, man, what are we talking about today? You yeah. said Jimmy, Jimmy Swinston and Casey, Case Keenum. But, you yeah. know, it, it was really a story of two defenses. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and the main thing that you saw was the Buccaneers' inability to stop the interior of the uh, St. Louis Rams. You know, uh, all day they were getting they were getting guys in Jameis Winston's face, and and here's the thing: Jameis Winston's a good quarterback, but man, especially in the NFL, as you know, man, that's that that game's fast already. So nice. to to have to be forced to make decisions even quicker when, yeah. when you know guys are going to be there, and and it doesn't help. I mean. Picking up a blitzer or identifying where a blitzer is coming from is fine. It's one thing. But when you have to do that and there's also guys get in your face that are just dominating your own offensive line, that's a total different story. So it was tough on them today, man. And uh, you saw it. You saw it. I mean, every time they got down there, right, every time the Rams – um, they bent a little bit, but they never broke. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's big defensively. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, defensive – uh, rookie defensive player of the year last year, Aaron Donald, uh, was sitting with Michael Irvin and those guys after uh, for the after show that the NFL yeah. Network does. And he was saying how they were rattling Jameis Winston in the first half. I mean, he only started – he started off 6 for 12. He was aired yeah. with a lot of his throws. And I'm looking at tweets – and people are like, oh, Jameis is a bum. Oh, yeah. uh, he should go back to stealing crab legs and such. People don't oh. understand. If you cannot set your feet and yeah. throw that football, yeah. it's, you, you're not going to be accurate. Jameis can make any, any throw in the NFL. That's why he was the first overall pick last year. Here's the problem. I mean, they were down 14 right away in right the there. first quarter, Just right? Like and that. it totally changes their game plan. Yeah. Tampa Bay is not a team that wants to throw the rock all the way downfield. No. Tampa Bay is a team that wants to run with Doug Martin. They want to they want to push Sims down the field, get those hard-earned gains, be in those third and three, third and four situations, and then throw the rock. They don't want to be a West Coast offense. Oh, you know yeah, what I mean? So, yeah. so St. Louis took them out of their game plan early. They jumped out. They had 14 points right off the bat. And that that made it really um, really tough on them scheme-wise. I'm talking about the Buccaneers. They really they were they were they're not a team that is is good enough right now to play from behind yeah. because they're so dependent on ball control. And when you're behind 14 points, you can't control the rock. You gotta go for it. You gotta go for it. And I mean, like it was kind of re reiterating and touching up on what you're saying you have the league's leading rusher yeah that's the offense the league's leading rusher yeah. vincent jackson is out i'm a huge vincent jackson fan so mike evans had to kind of step up into that number one receiver uh yeah. role and he he did a good job he he couple a couple little drop balls and a couple uh things that him and him and Jameis couldn't hook a couple balls. Him and Jameis yeah. Winston couldn't hook up on. But nine for 157 yards. And then the, the, the Humphreys kid, number 11, he had six for 60. That's their little – I call him Cole Beasley. He's a yeah. Cole Beasley to me. That's, he's, no, he's not a game breaker. He's not going to do anything. But that, that kid died, the one kid with the one catch for 44 yards. He was terrible. He he played yeah. a terrible game. No, you're you're right. You know, you go back to a guy like Mike Evans, and he still had a big game. He said nine for nine catches for one fifty seven touchdown. Right, that was a good game. But man, you know, especially with Mike Evans, you look at you know him over his career, especially going back to Texas A and M. You want to be able to throw the jump ball to a guy like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't when there's guys in your face. You know, it came down to the constant pressure. So how are they getting? I mean, you saw it in the fourth quarter. They're getting the ball to Mike Evans, but man, they're on these six seven yard digs, right? Yeah. B London, you were a guy that could go long downfield, you can catch the ball, you can jump over guys' heads. That's what big tall receivers that are powerful and have good head they want to be able to catch the ball at the height, right? But man, I mean you take you take a big guy like Mike Evans and you and you make him run those those intermediate routes because there's nothing else and the and the ball has to get out quick because of pressure. He's going to have 158 and 10 catches, but man, that, that that's about all he's going to get and you're not going to get downfield with him, right? You know, I, I liked everything you said, but I really love that. I really love what he said. How was hey? I was a beast after Buzz. I'm telling y'all, I was a beast. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said I think I, I I think I could go back and play just like To. So, but here's the thing. That's the thing, right? I mean, I mean, you were a beast, and and man, you ran with guys like S. J. Green and Jamel Richardson. But here was the thing. The reason why you guys had so and, and after Buzz TV, you have to do your history on on, on this now. Is the reason why you guys won those great cups? That you believed in protecting the quarterback. Yes, That's what you guys yes, did. You know yes, what I mean? You protected yes. the QB. 
Um, and what he's talking about here, uh, after Buzz TV, we were, we I played with the New York Giants and I played with the Miami Dolphins in the NFL, then went up to the CFL for the last five six years, and he was my teammate up there in Montreal. Uh, we got a great cup up there, and he's talking about the the height of the receivers we had, but our head coach was now uh, Baltimore Ravens yeah. OC, offensive coordinator Mark Tressman, who you know was the head coach for the Chicago Bears last year. And he really emphasized protecting the quarterback. There were yeah. times at receiver where we would stay in for a half a second, get a chip block, and then go out yeah. on our routes. You can do that up in Canada a lot, uh, but you can't do that as much in the NFL. But there were times... It, it, I'm, without getting into that too deep, you have to be able to protect your franchise yeah. quarterback. That's the money. Yeah. That's the money guy. He touches the ball every single play unless it's one of those stupid wildcat plays. Yeah. He touches the ball. So let's look at – we'll, we'll, we'll go over some of the stats a little bit longer, and then we'll go into some of the storylines and really get this party started. So total first down, total first downs, Tampa Bay 30. St. Louis, 16. Third mm. down efficiency. Efficiency. Ooh, I need a little, a little, little swig, swig. Tampa Bay, 3 for 10. St. Louis, 2 for 10. I mean, net yards rushing, 146 for Tampa Bay. Net yards rushing, 98 for St. Louis. Passing net yards, 363 Tampa Bay. Passing net yards, 221 for St. Louis. It doesn't look like St. Louis... Let's go over and talk about St. Louis a little bit. It doesn't look like, on paper, it doesn't look like they really put up 31 points. It doesn't look like an offense who, who really yeah. did too much. I mean, Gurley was held in check, 21 attempts for 48 yards, one touchdown. His longest was nine. Uh, they gave up four for 32 for Tavon Austin in terms of – and one touchdown. Um, a 21-yard reverse for a touchdown, which he just what, – what, what was that uh, show, Minister Society, that movie? Look at the wheels. <laughs> yeah. 427, yeah, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. That's a 427. And Case Keenum, I mean, he played an Alex Smith-type game, a game yeah. manager-type game, 14 for 17, 234 yards, two touchdowns. What do you think about the Rams overall as a team today? Well, the one, the one thing about the Rams was that – they, you know, their inability to pass the ball downfield it showed, right? I mean, Case Keenum got himself caught in a couple situations where he should have just thrown the ball away, and instead he uh, he was taking dives, putting himself in like, man, there's a few situations where they were like third and thirty-two, just off, you know, drop back quarterback passing alone. They they really Tampa Tampa Bay's defense played well. I mean, they if you're talking about game plans, they took they took the Rams out of that game their game plan a little bit too, right? They limited Gurley. They did a good job of, of holding him, keeping him in check, because you know he's an explosive player. But, uh, you know, Case Keenum is, uh, I mean, if you look back over the last couple of weeks, he hasn't blown anybody away with, with you, know, you know, with his playmaking ability, whether it's his arm or his leg. So, I mean, I think this is one of the cases. You just got to look at that first quarter, man. They jumped out. You know what I mean? Yeah. They jumped out, okay. and, and it really affected the way Tampa Bay was able to attack them from that point. You know what I mean? Well, since you I, since you put it like that, since they jumped out on him, but I don't know, Luke. I, I I think he, I think he just earned himself the starting job for the L.A. Rams next year because he like at fourteen for seventeen, man, two hundred thirty four yards. He hit Kenny Britt on the 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 deep one for sixty yard touchdown where they caught that corner, the rookie corner, eyeing mm -hmm. that quarterback on that stutter go. Yeah. You better watch out. They max protected, and they gave him a chance to throw the ball downfield, and like, and that was the one that put them up fourteen nothing. So, any, everything after that, I guess he just felt like he had to manage the game. The yeah. touchdown to Tavon Austin earlier was a jailbreak screen. They got it, you yeah. know. They got him, got him. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. Shoot, they got they didn't, you know, they weren't asking. They weren't asking Keenum to make these big throws and these complicated reads. You know, that one to uh, Kenny Britt, that was a relatively short pass. Yeah, you're right. The one to Tavon Austin, that was a screen. That, that, they pretty much, I mean, even the announcer said it. When Tavon Austin caught that screen, it, screen, it was pretty much punt return team for him. Yeah, yeah, you know pretty I mean? much. They'd set him up. They were calling the right place for him. So, I mean, yeah, when you have a 14-point cushion, you can sort of leave it in your defense's hands. And for, I mean, here's the thing, though. I mean, Tampa Bay still played well. They, they had 500 yards of offense. It's just when they got into that red zone, you know, and they were down on those ten yard lines, man. That's that's when the D line pressure. They 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 were able 
they were able to leave. Like they brought maybe one or two guys, but man, they weren't. They didn't have to just bring the house because that once again that defensive line for the Rams and especially the interior. And you talked about Donald. They played really, really well, especially down in their end zone with their backs against the wall. And here's here's what made me mad. And we can move on to the storylines. This one made me mad. So the Bucks were down twenty eight six. I believe it was in the third quarter. They had a four play. 98-yard drive where yeah. Jameis Winston and Mike Evans hooked up a couple times, and then he also hooked up with the, the die kid who he just let the ball hit the ground. instead. Yeah. Well, it, he was tagged down. He was I, I saw a dude touch him, uh, touch his jersey, so he was tagged down. So they get the two-point conversion, but the two-point conversion gets called back so because of a holding call, stupid yeah. penalty. Now they, they have a 43-yard extra point. You're kicking 43 yards for an extra point. Boom, you get that. The ensuing kickoff, boom, special teams break down. Buddy returns yeah. it inside the, inside the red zone. Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. That's one of those well, moments where you just – remember when Greg Hardy blew up on the special teams coach for the Cowboys? Yeah. That's a moment right there. Jameis Winston was upset and he was frustrated, but he obviously handled it like a professional uh, athlete should have. But that exact moment is the reason why Greg Hardy blew up on his special teams coach because we just took it – we just went down, what, eight yeah. points? We just went down eight points, and you guys, yeah. who all you have to do is go play special teams – you guys just gave up that long kick return. That's, you know, that's, that's the tale of their night. It's, it's, well, it's really the tale of their season, man. You know, you look at the top, top teams in the, this league. You look at the Pats. You look at the Panthers. Man, go look at their special teams. Yeah. Go look at their coverage units. They're unreal. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you, to run football, if you want to break it down for the, for the, for the people who aren't diehard football fans, yeah. all you got to do is win two out of the three phases of the game to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of people discount that third phase, which is the special teams phase, except the best teams in the league. Pats, Panthers, you name it. The Seahawks. The Seahawks are unreal. It's like yeah. all they do is practice special teams sometimes, you know? So, yeah, that special teams unit is, uh, is, is imperative. And, um, you know, the reason the teams at the top of the league are there is because they understand that and they take that stuff seriously. And you can't have mental lapses. I mean, you hit it right on the head. You're down eight. Down eight, coach. You know, down you're down eight. eight. Come on, man. This is the time where the special team is supposed to understand that, hey, there's a lot of momentum swinging our way. We got to do our part. But, hey, that's what separates the bad teams from the good. And in this case, it was just two bad teams. And you know what? I, I can't even say it was two bad teams because yeah. I think I looked at Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless had tweeted that uh, the Rams have so much talent on their team. He can't believe that their record is what it is. So he's yeah. trying to say, why isn't Jeff Fisher being blamed for their woes or their bad season and such? But all right, so um, let's, let's, let's move on to another storyline that we have uh, – that we were wanted to talk about. I guess we could just go Case Keenum, Case Keenum versus Jameis Winston in terms of who outplayed who. And we kind of talked about it a little bit. We yeah. went into their numbers. But Jameis Winston in the second half looked like a first round draft, uh, the first pick of the draft. Yeah. He looked like he I wasn't thinking about crab legs or mm -hmm. or him getting into trouble in, in college. He looked like he has matured and he looks like he is the better pick over Marcus Mariota. Hands down. You know, you know what you like about a guy like Jameis Winston is when you watch him play, is is you remember watching Brett Favre get after guys, you know? He would be yeah. getting in the face of defensive linemen, yeah. he would be getting in the face of refs, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy Swinston's the same type of guy, you know. He, I remember watching a couple of those series, and, you know, he was jumping up, pushing on defensive linemen, you know, arguing with the refs, you yeah. know, not doing anything too flagrant where he's getting a flag. But, you know, he's a very assertive guy, and, and, and when teams see their quarterbacks, you know, going helmet to helmet with defensive linemen after the play and pushing them around and stuff like that. Yeah. When teams see their quarterback and their leader doing that, yeah, it galvanizes the squad. I think that, you know, they really can build around that um, or and around him. It was a good pick, obviously. I won't go as far as saying he's that much better than Mariota right now. What? I mean, they're both really good QBs. You have to give them that. Um, are, but, yeah, I, I mean, like here's the thing. You, you, look at the, you look at the jobs both quarterbacks had to do, you know. I mean – Tampa Bay 
really, for the most part of that game, relied on on Winston because they had to throw the rock, right? Because they were down so much. Keenan was up the whole time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there were times where all they had to do was throw the ball away, and he wasn't doing that. So, yeah, you know what? Um, Winston handled the game a lot better. It's just, you know, it was unfortunate they got down so early because they were sort of put into that, you know, they had their backs against the wall. They could only really do one one or two things, you know, scheme-wise, and the Rams knew it. So if you're Jeff Fisher and you're the owner of the Rams, I don't really know his name. Um, sorry, sir. I'll buy you a coffee. First of all, if I'm Jeff Fisher and I'm, I'm, I'm Lovey Smith, I'm mad at the NFL for, for dressing us up like hot dog condiments on a Thursday uh, night. <laughs> I thought yeah. the unis were sweet. Uh, man. That's sweet, man. Hey, you got to keep in mind. I was looking for my Christmas tree ornaments. Uh, hey, man. And then I you, looked on TV and Tampa Bay's wearing them. You got to keep in mind, man. We're 30 plus, man. The kids these days, they like all that yeah. bright Bright color yeah, of this, yeah, skinny yeah. jeans, all the dance and the snapping and all that, man. Yeah, you're right. We're, you're we're, right. we're, we're old now, man. We're old yeah. now. All right, so yeah. does does Keenum, did he show you enough to be the starter? Or do you still nah. have to go out and draft a quarterback? Yeah, they got it. You know what? I mean, it was evident that they they, they lost confidence in Nick Foles. Um, you know, Keenum just – he doesn't throw with much confidence. I mean, he misses easy throws. And, and come on, there was – there was. I wish I could remember the downs, but there was a couple of downs where you know you're all you got to do is throw the ball out of bounds, you know, and and you and he's losing. He's backing up and he's ducking under guys trying to, and you know he's losing ten more yards. Like that's just not a, that's that's not a. You can't build on that, you know. Okay. And I think that uh, this this class, this NFL draft class, is going to be pretty good. And uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I would I would do everything I can if I was the St. Louis Rams to get a quarterback. So you you're know, not. You got to run him back, and and you know you, you got you know you got back. a few old linemen, and you know that defense. I'll tell you what, man. Ooh. Robert Quinn makes a difference, right? And they're a very aggressive unit. They can play. You got to remember, you know, the last five five games they haven't been playing them well, but man. They were dominating teams at the beginning of the year defensively. You know what I mean? They were keeping their squad in it. It's just, man, the, the injuries have sort of taken their toll, and they've been on the field a lot because the St. Louis offense hasn't been, you know what I mean, consistent necessarily. So, yeah, it's tough for them right now, man. But, yeah, I definitely think they have to go quarterback. Why and, wouldn't you? You know I mean? If you got a Keenum, and, uh, who's, who's definitely going to be a career backup, and, and Foles, who, who's not a franchise QB, He's a st- he can start in the NFL, but he's not a franchise QB. Yeah, go go QB. I mean, I mean, and I, I would go, I would go QB and let them battle it out. Kind of yeah. like this is kind of a situation like the Browns were in yeah. last year. Johnny Manziel coming out of college, and they had was it Brian Hoyer was the quarterback, yeah. and it was like you know Brian Hoyer played decent enough for them to say okay, we'll let you compete. Yeah. with the guy we bring in first round. So yeah. I can see that. But I wouldn't draft one in the first round wh- right away. Maybe I get a re- maybe I get another receiver. I mean, Kenny Britt had two for 71 today. He, he, Kenny Britt, he's getting up there. Yeah. He's, he's around. Yeah. He's, he's getting closer to my age. I'm not going to say how old I am after Buzz. Yeah. Don't worry about that. I'm old enough to wear it. This is my version of a s- Christmas holiday sweater. It's cold <laughs> outside. But you got Tavon Austin, and we don't know how – uh, Stedman Bailey is going to recover after getting shot in the head. I mean, they yeah, did say crazy. he was jogging yeah. today. He did yeah. say he jogged a little bit, so that's that's huge. But after getting getting shot in the head and just having a concussion, that's two different things. No, you're right, man. You know what, receiver, I, I can see why you're saying get a receiver too. I mean, you know, you got to find ways – you gotta find ways to use Tavon Austin. He's such a gifted oh, athlete. Man. He's, He's so the new Hester, the, the new football. Devin Hester. Yeah, well, yeah, he should be. You know what I mean. But I, I, but here's the thing. I mean, receivers or not, man, you got if you you can get if you get if the Rams traded their draft picks and somehow made a miracle and got the first five picks, you can pick the best five wide receivers out there. And if a quarterback can't get the rock to him, what good are they? Right. So, yeah. man, I, and I and I understand you comparing Manziel to that. But here's the thing: Manziel at least brought a couple of intangibles. You know what I mean? The ability to escape and extend plays with his legs and stuff like that. You know, you didn't want him doing it all the time, but you knew the ability was there. With Case Keenum, it's not really there. We're talking about Nick Foles, who's had a chance now. 
Like, don't forget, this year. isn't his first stop in St. Louis. Like, he had a shot in, in Philadelphia to prove he was the guy. Yeah, he did. And it was evident that he wasn't, you know. And St. Yeah, Louis did. took shot at him. They, right. You know, they, they gave up Sam Bradford. Granted, he has injuries, but, man, Sam Bradford was a franchise QB in St. Louis, the St. Louis Rams' eyes. You know, and they gave him up for falls. So that was another huge opportunity. And he just, you know, you, 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 you know how the game works, B. It's it's you only get a few opportunities, not even a few. You get one or two. One or two, and, you know, man. Yeah, Foles, Foles, I think, worked on his, and I don't think Case Keenum's uh, taking advantage of his either. All right, so got that out the way, and we have, you know, the L.A. Rams coming to – I mean, yeah. the St. Louis Rams coming to L.A. So let's get into the predictions. Let's run yeah. through all the games that are going through this uh, this Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We have a Saturday game. This I don't week, Saturday, which is pretty cool. That's crazy. I know it's bowl season, man. So we don't get yeah. we don't really get college football like we want. So we no, gotta right. you gotta go ahead and put that in there so the NFL can sell some jerseys and pay some bills. So the first game we have coming up: New York Giants versus the Dallas Cowboys. We will just get your quick thoughts on and run through these. You said you meant the Jets. New York, yeah, yeah, yeah my bad. I, yeah. I guess I'm a giant for life. Giant for life. Hashtag G man. Um, New York Jets at the bum Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, you know, I'm a huge Cowboys fan. I've been a Cowboys fan all my life. But the problem is, here's the thing. The Jets have uh, allowed a league low 78 yards per game. Mm. That's how many rushing yards they allow. And mm. right now, that's all the Dallas Cowboys oh, can do is rush have. the football. So they're a three-point uh, favorite, the Jets. I, I would take them by about 10. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I'm a huge Cowboy fan. Cowboy Nation is in me. I bleed it. But, man, I don't see us beating the Jets when they're so good against the run. Man. Yeah, it's rough. I gotta, I gotta go with you on that one because mm. I was gonna say upset, but then I thought about that stat you just gave me and how McFadden yeah. is pretty much the entire offense. That's it, and man. He's the entire team, and then I, we just, then we just go throw it to whatever corner of the end zone Dez is standing there and just pray he makes a miracle catch. I think that's he's, it. That's I all, think that's he's all, checked out. I think he's checked out. I think he's checked out. The foot Wouldn't hurting, you? and man, I got this got, guy back here. Now he's got here. money to worry about, man. Yeah, he's man. the franchise under the franchise right. tag. There, he's got a contract coming You're up. You're right, man. and I say that in a respectful way, Des. Shoot. Yeah. So, all right, we got yeah. Kansas City, hot Kansas City, going into Baltimore. There's no reason that you pick Baltimore at all. At all. Like, you're lying to yourself if, mm -hmm. if there's a reason. And don't forget, man, Kansas City's rolling. They've knocked off seven straight now. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they found their little groove. And uh, I think Kelsey's one of the better tight ends in the league. Yeah, and he's he healthy because uh, they had a little bit of a scare there. But, uh, yeah, I, I, you're lying to yourself if, if you're going to take Baltimore here. And this next one's a big one. Yeah. This is a big one. Houston at, at Indiana. Uh, not Indiana. Indianapolis. This is a big one. This could be for the division. The Colts don't lose to Houston, man. They don't. That's they, so they've true. Won, they've won the last. They've won the last six against Houston, I think, and uh, and, and I think they're playing at home. And so, Andrew uh, Luck is supposed to be back. I believe so. Oh, really? I believe yeah. Andrew Luck is supposed to be back. Yeah, I know and we don't know what to call. We don't know what the health is of uh, of Brian Hoyer either, right? So, uh, man, in a He's... tough game, in a, in, a, in a crucial divisional game. Man, that, I think that's going to be close, man. I'm going to go uh, – I'm going to take the home team and my boy Jarrell Freeman on uh, Indy. Jarrell Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, former yeah. Saskatchewan Rough Rider in the CFL. Yeah. We have a lot of those down in the NFL. Better pay attention. All right, yeah, so absolutely. this next game is pretty much a who cares, Atlanta at Jacksonville. Well, Jacksonville cares. I think Jacksonville still thinks they can make the playoffs, and I don't know what ah, Atlanta. I don't know what's happened ah. to Atlanta. What is, I don't know. They they looked like the team I'm talking about. They had the whole league worried about uh, worried uh, in the first month of the year, and and now they're just yeah they're dog meat right now, man. I think Jacksonville rolls. <laughs> hey, hey, B, you're, you're a receiver, man. Don't. I'll tell you what, if there's a guy that you wanted to play with, it's Blake Bortles now. He can throw the rock. He had five touchdowns last week. He's a, he's a stud. He's looking good, man. I, he he actually, him. there was one game he played so well, I started playing with him on Madden. But oh, the, really? I started playing with him on Madden, man. And that yeah, receiver, he, Hearns, yeah. and then Robinson. Yeah. yeah, them boys can play, man. If, and if, I. If, Porter, if a quarterback is playing well enough that you go back to Madden, because guys have their teams on Madden. Guys now. have they their teams. Like, yeah. I play with the Chiefs right. now. Um, Who you got? I play with the Chiefs. Oh, well, I'm, I'm going with Jacksonville on this one, man. I'm Atlanta. Matt Matt Ryan gets traded to the same the L. A. Rams next year. Mark my words. If that happens, L. A. Rams will be a they'll be that'll that'll be a huge upgrade. <laughs> huge. Upgrade. 
Chicago at Minnesota. Must win for both teams. Minnesota doesn't look like the same Minnesota they looked like earlier in the year now. Yeah, I know. I don't know what's happened to you. They 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 almost seemed like they found like a, a one two punch in uh, AP, and then they started working Stefan Diggs in there, and and but they've gotten away from him lately, and it, and they've gone back to just being mainly an AP type of team. Um, man, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna say Chicago on this. I, and, I was gonna uh, say that. Oh, where are you? Damn I was gonna it. Well, say yeah. that. Well, then we agree. I, I like I like man Alshon Jeffrey, one of the best receivers in the league, and and they got that nice run into like Cutler's playing great. He's he's playing he's playing good ball, not great. I shouldn't have said great, but he's playing good ball. I'm gonna go for uh, Shy Town with the upset. Go Shy Town as long as it doesn't come in the hand. It, as long as the game doesn't wow. have to be decided by that kicker. Robbie Gold so man. many daggone it's, kicks. It's if you're not fired, if they don't fire him soon, then I'm driving to Chicago. Me and him, we're gonna have words. Right now, it's his, his reputation is preceding him. That's yeah. what's happening. <laughs> Tennessee at New England. Eh. I don't know, man. I don't. I like as good as as good as Tennessee has in terms of potential. That's New England. So that's hands down yeah. New England. Yeah. I think the uh, let's see the the um, I think this point spread is probably about fourteen. I'd, I'd go New England by 17 at least. Go New England. Ooh, here goes here goes the marquee matchup, baby. Carolina yeah. versus the New York Giants. Man, listen, I, I love Josh you. Josh Norman, bro. Odell Beckham Jr., come on now. That's primetime TV now, Luke. Hey, listen, look. Here's the bottom line. The Giants are allowing 418 yards Ooh, per gosh. game. Carolina Panthers are unstoppable. Yeah, you know, you're right. And that's, that's, and, that's and, 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 man, I'll tell you what. This should be watched. This should be the most watched game in the league because this, you mentioned Odell Beckham, man, but they got Greg Norman over there on the, on the corner at Carolina. And you want to talk about one of the best court? This guy's a rookie, right? And he shut down some of the most elite receivers in the game. And OBJ versus Norman is going to be an awesome matchup. I can't wait to see it, dog. It's, it's a uh, defensive it's player. It's Norman's second year. It's his second year. He played last it's year. Second he year. played last oh, year. My bad. And he's Either got a way, chip on his he, shoulder. He's I one like of the him. best cornerbacks in the league, hands down, hands right down. now. But we're going to you know? be whipping we're like OBJ, man. Come on now. The boy's bad, man. The boy, that's man, a bad I'll, look, boy, look, man. Look, man, I'm, I'm pulling for him. He's on my fantasy team. Yeah. So oh, I, you yeah, eating, I, man. But yeah. I, that's the problem, man. The Giants just can't stop anybody. You know what I mean? And, Buff- and then the offense, yeah, the, you just can't leave it on the offense, man. They just can't stop anybody. Buffalo at Washington. That's a big game. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Buffalo. Man, yeah. nah, they disappoint me, man. They, I, I, I know Tyrod Taylor's from Virginia, seven five seven. We in the house. What's up? But that team just, they just disappoint me, man. They underachieve. Yeah. They, well, that's the thing, right? I mean, but but they're playing Washington, right? And, and Washington is. Better watch been out! I'm gonna tell there. Michigan State that you're going against Kirk Cousins. Oh, you're I know, Michigan I know. State I hate guy. it, right? I hate it, but I mean, I, I also, man, if if I was up here picking every team that uh, that a guy from Michigan State played on, man, my my record for, for predicting games would be terrible. <laughs> All right, so let's go next game: Green Bay at Oakland. This could be Ooh. a good one. What do you think? Oakland's the home team on this one, Oakland's too. Oakland's the home team, but they just, they're not consistent enough. But that boy, Amari Cooper, mama, that's a Shoot. bad man. That's a, that's, that boy can play some ball, man. Man, that dude's unreal. And how about Charles Woodson? Like, dude, I, I don't, I don't understand where he's getting it from. You I don't know, know what I mean? It's, it's like, it was like with Daryl Green. Remember Daryl Green Darryl played Green. for so long? But, but man, Charles Woodson, just unbelievable, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually, I'm going to, man. I'm gonna go with Oakland in this game. I go with Oakland. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna That's go with pick. Oakland. Let's go yeah. Cleveland at Seattle. Like it's even gonna be a game. Yeah, it's I. It's all you know what, that's one of the, that, that, that's a game in the second round of the league too. So that's a game that's gonna like it's gonna trump a couple of the good games. Like yeah. you know what I mean? So I, if you watch NFL Red Zone, the second half yeah. games is only three games on and it's this is one of the ones where you're just like come on man but that does it that that does allow you to watch this denver at pittsburgh game brock osweiler this here's your chance i'm going i'm going i'm going with denver i'm going with yeah yeah i'm going with denver i I like pittsburgh but man i i man brock osweiler you know Say what you want about him. He's he's still he's still he's managing the game well, and Denver still got a great D, man. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Denver. If you want to win, go with Big Ben. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Dude, hey like man, it. that offense, those receivers, 
The boys can put, man, they have they have juice on that offense. I've been in that no, offense right. when I tried yeah. to make that team and just being able, like, I tried to make the team with the Steelers, and that was Antonio Brown's rookie year. And I knew he was going to be what he was going to be. But just the way Mike Tomlin and the way they approach everything, that entire organization, man, like, yeah. man, that's just, I, I, I roll with Big Ben, man. I rocks with Big Ben. Now, this next game. Hey, hold they, on a second. Remember, though, Denver can score the ball now. So if Ben, yeah, ben throws score. an interception, right. man, they might take it to the crib. You You're can't right. fall behind because of a defensive touchdown in that game. You're right. This next game, ladies and gentlemen, the Miami Dolphins versus the San Diego Chargers. Man, NFL red zone is going to suck the second <laughs> in the second half games. We have <coughs> one game to watch. You know what? San Diego used to be so good to watch. Like, I know, it's man. so fun to watch San Diego. And now they're just – because they can't – they don't have an offensive line. They can't Nothing. protect Rivers. Nothing. You know, Gates is getting old. I'm going Miami. He's going against the L.A. Chargers, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, they'll be – yeah, they'll, they'll be they'll be in L.A. You Two think they'll keep the name Chargers? Nah, something Hollywoodish. The, you yeah, know, out so here, it's, it's just holly weird. It's crazy yeah, out LA, here. They call themselves the Kardashians. <laughs> Cincinnati at San Francisco. AJ McCarron's first game as a starter. I wonder if his hot girlfriend or hot wife's going to be there. Yeah, I hope so, man. Because the, by the end of the, by the third quarter, that might be all there is to look for in this game, man. I I, I think Cincinnati's gonna gonna win big, man. Honestly, I you think, think so? really? and it, it's not gonna be because of McCarron, man. You gotta think about the the the, the weapons he's got around. AJ, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, dude, they they're so, unreal. Green, Eifert, they got so, the running game. They can. Pl- wow, man. Yeah. yeah I don't think right. this is gonna be close. Arizona. Well, this is a Sunday night game. Arizona at Philly. Yeah, yeah. Arizona's high scoring offense. Yeah, they're probably good. about four fifty to five hundred yards. Actually four fifty yards a game. Man, either way, they can they can score the rock, dude. It's it's tough yeah. to defend that team, you know. And uh Philadelphia, they played well against their defense played well against New England a couple weeks ago, but they've been inconsistent as of late. Um I just don't see anybody stopping the cars, man. I think the cars are gonna be one of those teams that uh they'll battle for the Super Bowl this yeah. year. Yeah, and Bruce Aarons was the offensive coordinator with the Steelers when I was trying to yeah. make that team and I'm just I'm a huge fan of that guy, man. Even though he used to he used to MF me like it was really? nothing. That's funny. But I, Isn't I it believe, nice though when I you believe see the guys in him. that you played for having so much success. Oh, yeah. I, I love watching that. Him, Tomlin, all those guys, Co- Coach Coughlin. I, I love yeah. watching those guys having the success because those guys used to pull me to the side. And anytime I was slacking, they tell me, man, you got so much potential. You need to come on, like, step up. Yeah. Come on. We need bigger plays yeah. out of you in practice. That sort of thing. Um, and last but not least, the last game, a Monday night game. <sighs> Detroit at New Orleans. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go New Orleans, and uh, I'm gonna go. But it's gonna. I, I have a feeling it's gonna be an unconventional New Orleans win. Like everybody sees New Orleans and Drew Brees, I think they're gonna pound the rock, run the ball in a few times, and play good defense to beat the Detroit Lions. I don't think it's gonna be a through the air type of game. Did I just see you take your wedding ring off? Just because no. you're oh, no, this is a this oh, is a what's it called? This is a. I thought uh, you took the ring off because you were on yeah. TV in uh in L. A. You want all the L. A. <laughs> ladies to see you, man. I I can That's I can funny. dig no, it. It's this no really. It's this. Uh, oh, it's right. a twist act. All right, I can dig it. Hey, um. So you that's, remember, that was, it's 11.45 out here, man, so you know, we're, I'm, I'm, everybody's sleeping around here. Oh, man, I don't even want to tell. Oh, yeah, oh, it's, you, I thought you said rent was 11.45. I was like, oh. man, sign me up because these L.A. Yeah. prices is killing me. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I wouldn't be complaining about uh, housing prices to anybody from L.A. for sure. <laughs> but that's the end of the predictions, and that's pretty much going to wrap up the show. We want to thank uh, Luke Mullinder for coming on here. Why don't you tell everyone, once again, remind everyone where they can find you on social media and the website. And you know what? You can find me on Twitter at Luke Mall uh, nine five. Um, I'm on Instagram, uh, same same type of deal. But uh, I run ProPerspective.ca. It's a CFL website. Um, you know what? For you American viewers, a lot of you guys like the CFL game, and me and B London are gonna hook up and and really bring some cool things to you. I'm excited about that. But yeah, Luke Mall on Twitter, man. Holler at me all day. Get used to that face, ladies and gentlemen, because we're trying to work on getting a CFL offseason show here on, on After Buzz pumping out. But um, we thank you guys for watching. I really, I really, I'm sorry I was gone last week. I got in a car accident. You know, I, I look like I'm okay. I am okay now. A little shaken up, so I couldn't make it in. I'm Brandon London, the cultured athlete. Make sure you hit me up. 
hate tweet me, holla tweet me, say what's up to your boy at Cultured Athlete on all the social medias, BrandonLondonTV.com for the website and YouTube.com slash the Cultured Athlete. And make sure you like, follow, all that, and after buzz. I thank you guys for watching. We had a great night of Thursday night football. See you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.